From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. This is Peter Hardy at Tri-Western Property and Casualty Insurance. Hi, how are things in the Golden West? You still in Reno? Sure am. Good boy. What goes, Pete? A little trouble with a big dairy farm out here, Johnny. Amenian dairy. Okay, Pete, tell me all. A year and a half ago in a fire, Amenian lost one of his silos. You know, one of those big towers where they store and cure a lot of chopped up corn and stuff. Yeah, yeah, I know. Cost us $21,000. 21000 for a silo? This time it's a compound silo, and the claim is for 56000 Oh! But I don't want to pay it. I don't blame you. Sure, because, Johnny, I think it was arson. Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. And now, act one of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Tri-Western Property and Casualty Insurance Company, Reno, Nevada office. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the doubtful dairy matter. Expense account item one, $141.20. Transportation and incidentals, Hartford to Reno, Nevada. It was about 9 a.m. when I arrived, so I checked into the Mapes Hotel, then walked over to Pete Hardy's office. Armenian dairies are just north of here, Johnny, in Warm Springs Valley off Route 33. Well, then I'd better rent me a car. Or you can use mine. Now, now, Pete, how can I run up my expense account unless I have something to run it up with? Johnny, for once... Uh-uh. Anyhow, the reason why these silos Amenian has are so expensive... Is that the owner's name, by the way? Yes, Aram Amenian. And I take it he's Armenian? Strangely enough, no. Now, he's had all his silos very specially built. Oh, how specially can you build a silo? Just a concrete base, a lot of long wooden staves to get the circular shape, and a good roof on top. Well, he has some trick with them inside. Like what? That's his deep, dark secret. But he claims it makes better silage for his cattle than is possible anywhere else in the world. And one of these things burned up a year and a half ago. The word exploded best describes it. Yeah. And as I said, cost us 21000 And now the replacement has gone up in flames. Right? Yes, day before yesterday. He filed the claim the same day. Well, why do you suspect arson? Did the local authorities find anything suspicious? No. But you go out and talk with Amenian, Johnny. And if you don't end up with the same kind of feeling I have, well, I'll leave my shirt. <laughs> Expense account item two, $50, deposit on a drive-your-own car. Finding the Armenian dairy and ranch some 20 miles north of the city was easy. It was spread out all over the countryside. Hundreds of acres of well-irrigated, lush, green pastures. Square in the middle of the ranch sat one of the cleanest, most modern dairies I ever saw. Aram Armenian gave me the grand tour, and I must say I was impressed. There was close to 200 well-kept Guernseys in the main barn which was clean as a whistle. The milking machines, coolers, separators, clarifiers, and so on were the same. Yep, a prosperous-looking setup. Finally, Mr. Armenian took me out to where a small group of workmen were cleaning up what was left of his compound silo. As you can see, Mr. Dollar, only the concrete base is left. That must have been a pretty big silo, Mr. Armenian. That's the largest and most efficient in the entire West. Still, $56,000. Oh, the size had nothing to do with that. It was the inner construction, known only to Barnwell, the man who built it for me, and to myself, of course. Well, what was so special about it? Principally a method of venting. Venting? Yes. It increases the phosphorus and lactic acid content. Well, I thought the point in the silo was to keep it pretty well sealed up. Venting within, Mr. Dollar. But that's all I'll tell you about it. It cost me 56000 to have Barnwell build it. And I wish the company to pay my claim as quickly as possible because I'm starting construction on a new one immediately. Of the same type? Oh, vastly improved type. Oh, then it was to your advantage to lose the old one. Just what do you mean by that? Your loss came at just the right time, didn't it? Well, just a minute, though. With the insurance money, you can build a new and better one. And when it gets out of date, I suppose you'll have another fire. Oh, I see. You, uh, you think perhaps these last two were deliberately set? Were they? Ridiculous. Is it? But if they were... Yeah. If they were, I certainly wouldn't know it. Oh, come on now. After what you've just said. And what's more, Mr. Dollar, 
I'm sure you'll never be able to prove it. Act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. We sometimes wonder, what is the life of a human being really worth? Not too much? Or maybe a great deal? Does it depend on whose life it is? Whatever the answer, one thing is certain. Fred Hargesheimer, since World War II, has felt that his life is worth quite a lot. Quite a lot of gratitude. During the war in the Pacific, about June of 1943... Lieutenant Hargesheimer had his P-38 fighter plane shot out of the sky. Badly wounded, he bailed out over a tiny island, New Britain. It looked pretty small from where he hit the silk, but he found it much bigger when he hit the ground. It was bigger, and in complete control of the enemy. But Hargesheimer was lucky. After a month of lonely hiding, he was found by a group of friendly natives from the village of Nantambu. They cared for him and successfully hid him from enemy patrols for the next four months at the risk of their own lives. Then Hargesheimer was able to make it back to civilization. For the next 17 years, Fred Hargesheimer thought about those wonderful people of Nantambu. 12,000 miles away in the United States of America, Hargesheimer put a great plan into effect. He made speeches, took up collections, sold jewelry belonging to his family and worked out a way to bring a bit of civilization and happiness to the little village of Nantambu. Needless to say, the villagers gave him a spectacular welcome upon his return. Fred Hargesheimer showed his gratitude to the people who had saved his life. But life is worth little without freedom. The right of all men, everywhere. And now, act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the Doubtful Dairy Matter. By what he said and the way he said it, Aram Amenian was practically challenging me to find out how arson was involved in the destruction of his $56,000 secretly constructed compound silo. Expense account item three phone call from a gas station on Highway 33 to Reno Police Headquarters. But Lieutenant Brady of the arson squad assured me he'd failed to find anything indicating the fire was set. So dead end. Until I remembered a little trick that had worked for me before and might work again. Item 4, 27 cents for a loaf of white bread at a grocery store along the highway. Then I drove back to the Amenian Ranch. If I had known you were hungry, Mr. Dollar, I should have had something provided for you at the ranch house, in spite of your rather nasty attitude about this loss of mine. Food is the last thing I'm thinking of, Mr. Amenian. Well, then why this loaf of bread, if you're not... Whoop. Now, let's see. Oh, now, surely you're not going to eat the piece that dropped in the ashes. No. No, no. Then get it out of your mouth, man. Well, mm hmm. Whatever in the world are you doing, Mr. Dollar? Yeah, yeah, I knew it. You knew what? A sure, a sure test for kerosene, Mr. Armenian. What? Yeah, fresh bread dropped in the ashes of a fire even days after the fire is out. I don't understand. I can still taste the kerosene. And, mister, it makes things look pretty bad for you. Me? Oh, good heavens, man, you can't. Dollar, I resent this this completely unfounded accusation. Go right ahead and resent. Or better still, let me get hold of a stenographer and you can dictate a confession. Get out of here. Want to do it the hard way, huh? Get off this ranch, Dollar. Now leave. Immediately. Sure. And I warn you, don't come back. Because if you do... Better be careful, Mr. Armenian. The kind of a threat you're about to make wouldn't sound very good in court. Get out. Get out. Out on the highway, I stopped at the mobile gas station again and made another phone call. Item five, another 20 cents. It was to my old friend, Herb Carlbert, cashier of Reno's Farm Trade National Bank. It was past closing time, but he promised to leave a door open for me. So I grabbed a sandwich and a Coke along the way. That's item six, 80 cents, including tip. Then at the bank, Herb led me back to his private office. Well, sit down, Johnny. Tell me all about yourself. Yeah, later, Herb. We'll go out on the town and talk our heads off. Right now, I need some information. I hope you can tell me where to get it. Oh? Information about what? The Armenian Dairy. Or better still, Armenian himself. You know him? Oh, I certainly do. We're his bank. His happens to be one of the best accounts we have, especially in our investment department. You mean it's big? <laughs> Funny big. Like how much? Well, now, Johnny. I'll tell you this. 
If I had a quarter of his net worth, I'd have retired long ago. No big outstanding debts on his place? Anything like that? Not a penny. Aram's financial condition is as... Now, wait a minute. Yeah? That fire and explosion of his compound silo? Yeah, that's right. Herb, I've found evidence indicating arson. Well, certainly you aren't accusing him. Who else? Oh, no, 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 you're wrong. Oh, now, look, Herb, he filed that claim so fast. It's the most natural thing in the world for him. It's the way he does everything, like paying his bills immediately on receipt. He works that way. You expect everybody else to. Well, he gave me the impression he wanted to collect quickly in order to have money for rebuilding. Of course. Rather than cash in some of his blue chip investments. Herb, somebody fired that silo. Well, it certainly wouldn't be Aaron. Ah, uh, you sound like you're in cahoots with him. <laughs> what about his employees? From my impression of the man... They seems... love him like a father. Every one of them. And if every employer was as generous as he is, there wouldn't be any labor troubles in this country. Well, the fact remains that somebody somehow stood to profit by destroying that silo. And the one before it. Well, I can't imagine who... Even his competitors like and respect the man. Oh, so they say. No, 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 they do. He's helped them stay on their feet during hard times, develop new ideas and methods, then pass them on to them. Oh, the fact remains... Look, Johnny, Johnny, I've had a rough day. How about a nice, cool, casual drink? Then we'll have dinner and take in the town. <laughs> Item 7, 2130, for drinks and a good dinner back at the Mapes. But I didn't enjoy either. Because Herb and his defense of a median was no help at all. Except perhaps for giving me a list of all the people he could think of who did business with him. I decided to check them all first thing in the morning. Finally, about midnight, having lost our share at a couple of nearby gambling clubs, we parted. Herb drove away to his home on the outskirts of town. I went back to the mix. Uh, take Mr. and Mrs. Kenworthy to room 314, boy. Yes, sir. What can... Oh, Mr. Dolly. Her... Oh, just my key, please. Certainly. Here you are, sir. And I hope you enjoy a pleasant night's rest. Thanks. Oh, by the way, there was a gentleman here looking for you early this evening. Uh, hung around quite a while. Said he'd be back. Well, who was he? Well, he didn't give his name, sir, nor did he wish to leave a message. Mr. Armenian? Mr. Armenian the dairyman? Oh, no, sir. I'm quite sure. Okay, thanks. Yes, sir. Good night. Good night, sir. Oh, Mr. Dollar. Yeah. There he is. There. Huh? Going out the door, the dark brown coat. You're sure? Yes, sir. The same man. I wonder. Yeah, so do I. But, but if he knows you, sir, and saw you, sir. By the time I get out the front door, the man in the brown coat was halfway down the block and walking fast. Faster and faster, as a matter of fact, as I gained on him. He turned the corner, and by this time, both of us were running. Hey! Hey! Were you looking for me? By the end of three or four blocks, it was a real foot race. Then suddenly he turned into an alley, and like a darn fool, I plunged into the darkness of it after him. Hey. Hey. Right here. Oh, no, you... Act three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. Our flag now numbers 50 stars, and behind each star, there stands yet another flag representing one of the 50 states. New Hampshire state flag carries its state seal on a field of dark blue. The seal is surrounded by a wreath of laurel leaves, the symbol of peace, interspersed with nine stars because New Hampshire was the ninth state to join the Union. The heart of the state seal is a representation of the frigate Raleigh, recalling the glory of the early days of sail. New Hampshire state flag, the flag of the ninth state to enter the Union, was adopted on April 29, 1931. And now, Act Three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the Doubtful Dairy Matters. If it hadn't been for a big interstate moving van that drove into the alley where I'd been waylaid, well, I have a strong hunch I wasn't supposed to have lived through that beating. The truck driver, who absolutely refused a tip, incidentally, half walked, half carried me back to the mapes. And the desk clerk had a doctor in my room within a few minutes. A oh, terrible thing. Terrible thing, Mr. Dollar. You're being attacked like this? And of course, I'll have to make a report over to the police. Oh, do anything you like, doctor. Just, oh, just get me patched up, will you? And you eat. You eat now. Yeah. You, uh, you have no idea who could have done this to you? Believe me, I intend to find out. Judging by this swollen hand of yours, you've got in some good licks, though, and whoever... <laughs> What's the matter? 
Well, this is a very unusual ring you're wearing. Oh, some kids in the YMCA gave it to me a couple of years ago. I helped them with a the softball team. Oh, yes, of course. That's the Y insignia. Yeah, one of them made it. And the three raised points stand for spirit, body, and mind. Yeah, that's they? right. Well, now, if you just... Oh, wait, what's that for? To make sure you get plenty of rest. Oh, no, no. Now, wait, Doc. I'm the doctor. Roll up your sleeve, please. Yeah, I'll do it. Look, if this shot leaves me groggy in the morning... You wake up feeling fine. There you are. Incidentally, that ring... Listen, before you notify the police... Ooh, hey, this... This shot works pretty fast. Yep. As I started to say... Uh, if that ring of yours didn't leave a mark on whomever you defended yourself against out there in the alley, I'll be very much surprised. In a few seconds, I was out like a light. But then a whole set of weird dreams began to plague my somewhat battered mind. And questions about who would attack me and why. Only the why was only too obvious to keep me from finding an arsonist who... Yeah, yeah, who probably bore the mark of my ring on his kisser. I thought of the names Herb had given me and his insistence that none of them could be guilty. Wait a minute. There was one name he hadn't mentioned, but a median had, of one man who stood to gain a lot by the destruction of the silos. Or maybe it was just a crazy hunch, part of the wild dreams that came from the beating I'd taken. In any event... In the morning, as soon as the bank was open, I was in Herb Carlbert's office again. Well, yes, he has an account here too, Johnny. At least he did before. How about loans? Has this man we're talking about taken out any loans? Well, yes, but, oh, Johnny, you know I can't... Yeah, I know, I know. The fact remains he's pretty hard up for dough, isn't he? Well, I didn't say that. Although, of course, if that's the conclusion you choose to draw... Tell me this. He owes the bank money now, doesn't he? Yeah. All right. Did he also owe the bank a lot of money about a year and a half ago? Johnny. Yeah. Well? Johnny, you're right. But who would have suspected... And when you consider that Aram Aminian is the one man who has given him money for all the work he's... Well, I can't believe it. Herb, it started out as a pure hunch, but right now I'd bet my... Where can I find him? Well, if Aram plans to go ahead with new construction, sure, he's probably... Sure, over... sure, out there at the dairy. You want to come along? Well, maybe I'd better after the way Aram threatened you. I guess I owe him an apology for the way I tore into him. Let's go. Johnny. Yeah? What... What if we're wrong... What of this man we think is the arsonist? Will you agree that the firebug is the same man who attacked me in the alley? Well, I suppose so. Then we'll soon know. Because believe me, he's a marked man. We made the Amenian carry in 30 minutes flat, and we're told at the gate that Aram Amenian was in the pasteurizing plant. Maybe you better let me talk to Aram first, Johnny. It's not Aram that I'm interested in, Herb, and you know it. Oh, just a minute. Huh? What's the matter? Hold it a second, will you, while I tie my shoelace? Yeah, sure. And I've been thinking, Johnny, on the way out, you know, we could really be terribly, terribly wrong. Herbert, old man. Aram, we're just looking for you. Well, I heard the car pull up. I thought it was Joe Barnwell. He's due here to show me final plans for the new silo he's gone to. Well, Mr. Dollar. Yeah, that's right, Mr. Amini. I want to apologize for... Well, what's the matter? That dressing on your cheek. What about it? Just what is that little bandage hiding? Johnny. Well, Amenian? As a matter of fact, I cut myself shaving this morning. Well, I'm sorry, mister, but that bandage is going to have to come off. Look, Johnny. Now, just a minute, Dollar. Ah, here you are, Aaron. Here's the final blueprint for it. Why... What's wrong, Joe? Uh, gentlemen, this is Mr. Joseph Barnwell, Herb Carlbert. We know each other. And Mr. Johnny Dollar. Yeah. I think we know each other, too, Barnwell. <laughs> oh, do we? Joe, do you have an accident of some sort? Your face. What's going to happen to him now won't be any accident, Mr. Amenian. And I apologize for doubting that you cut yourself with a razor. What? I'm afraid I don't understand. But that bandage on your face doesn't hide any razor cut, does it, Barnwell? Poor <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. All right, then let's rip it off. You certainly won't. Good heavens, Johnny. Yeah, look. The mark from the ring on my hand where I struck him last night. Okay, Barnwell. Now, now stop. Don't, don't touch me. Start talking. 
tell a median how you burned up his fancy, expensive silo so you could build another one. How you burned the other one up. Talk. I swear I... Talk. 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 Yeah, he talked all right, plenty. About a rank it's so old, I hadn't heard of it in years. A crooked builder who burned out his own plants to get himself more work. And in this case, a natural, because he was the only one who shared Aram's secret construction plans. And by the time I was through with him, he blabbed about some of the other clients he'd taken the same way. Expense account total, including incidentals and the trip back to Hartford, $418 even. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Our star, Bob Bailey, will return in just a moment to give you a hint about what's in store for you on next week's program. Meantime, listen carefully. There is a biblical verse which promises life is going to be better for everybody in the world when mercy and truth are met together and righteousness and peace have kissed each other. When the people of the United States of America express that thought, it is not in idleness, but in deeds. Today, it is common knowledge that when the gigantic earthquakes and tidal waves struck the Republic of Chile in South America not too long ago, thousands of lives were lost and tens of thousands were left homeless, hungry, and suffering. Immediate aid in the form of food, medicine, clothing, supplies, and professional and technical help were flown to Chile by the United States Air Force in a Mercy airlift. When the work was done and the suffering people made happier and more comfortable, American servicemen received such grateful thanks from the people of Chile that they felt increased pride in being able to wear the uniform of the United States of America. This same pride has come to other Americans in uniform when mercy and truth have come together to follow the wake of disaster in other parts of the world. After the earthquake in Agadir, Morocco, after two devastating cyclones swept across the Bay of Bengal into East Pakistan, after a typhoon rocked and battered Japan, as mercy and truth got together, so did peace and righteousness to form a pact for freedom, the right of all men everywhere. And now, here is our star to tell you about next week's intriguing story on yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Next week, while well, I get into cattle country again, and a Hereford steer solves a case for me. So join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Truly Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood. It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone, who also wrote tonight's story. Heard in our cast were Paul Duboff, Will Wright, John Daner, Harry Bartell, Harley Bear, and Forrest Lewis. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Dan Coverley speaking. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.